Yeah, so the, the, this used to be such a thriving little um, shopping area. All the shops were full, you know, these ones are all closed now. It, it, it was more or less a mini little community centre. Some of these places just got robbed beyond belief, so people in desperate situations just did some nasty stuff, so. A recent Oxfam report on inequality found almost a third of all wealth in New Zealand goes to the richest 1%, and that gap between the rich and the poor is only widening. What's the coalition government done so far to address this? We're in Fairfield, Hamilton, one of the most deprived areas in the country, to talk about the real effects of poverty with Eddie Neha, who runs the local community house. Kia ora, Eddie. Tēnā koe, mate. Tāra mai ki Come on, Kia guys. Kia ora. If you asked a, a, a young person around here what they want to be when they grow up, and, and I, I can probably tell you that 90% of them will tell you, I don't know. Because uh, you know, this community, you know, this community's third, fourth generation um, beneficiary, so they don't have a, 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 a vision. It's a hard neighbourhood, but you know, there's some beautiful people still living around here, and there's still beauty in these these young people to try and develop as well. Eddie offered to take us on a ride along through Fairfield and invited Annie Williams, who has lived in the community her whole life. Annie helps redistribute food to the homeless and others living in poverty. How long have you lived around here? Since I was eight years old. How have you seen the suburb change in that time? Oh, it's changed hugely. One, uh, there's not as much food around as there used to be. We used to grow a lot of food of our own. And probably that's why I do the food thing and the food parcels today. Because um, I, I, I see, I've seen the need over the years. Yeah, when I was a kid growing up, beside Fairfield Park, you could walk past almost every fence and pick to your delight, you know, there was oranges and apples or such and such. All those old fruit trees had gone. So, so we've taken on the, the, taken the lead from the people in Auckland where they've set up these kai pantries, where people donate to the pantry and then anybody can just sort of come along and take what you need. When you talk about those depravity things, you name it, yep. it, it it's in this community. Yeah. And, and, but, but it's not something that they chose, that we choose to have in this community. Domestic violence, poverty, yeah. those things are issues that, that, that fall on top of us, you know, and we're yes. just driven into them. In its first 100 days, the government increased accommodation supplements and benefits, raised the minimum wage, introduced a winter energy payment to help people heat their homes, and increased family tax credit payment rates. But has any of this made a difference for the people of Fairfield? You know, I think we look at governments and we expect them to do more. I have to give the thumbs up to this particular government that's, that, that's in place at the moment. My first thing that comes to mind is at least, I think it was during the month of July, everybody got some real cash money in their pockets. Was that the benefit lift? Yeah, that's right. So, you know, at least I can say that this is one government that has stepped up, albeit in a small way. Um, it's going to be baby steps, but, you know, we all felt that giving. But Eddie and Annie say there's still a disconnect between the people of Fairfield and the people with the power to make the changes they need. Yeah, no, total disconnect. Well, the, the, you, you've got a community here like Fairfield that, that don't care. They don't care anymore because they live in this situation and they see that it's that it's the government you know, haven't done enough, so they've just disconnected themselves. These, the, you know, the whānau here don't vote. They, 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 their mindset is such that they think, oh, whatever I say, it, nothing's going to happen. It's a day by day survival. You know, keep keep plodding along. Uh, when I need the government, they, they, they're only a lot of these the whānau here. Their only inroad into government is the Ministry of Social Development in terms of wins or. Housing NZ. That's who they perceive as being the government. If inequality continues to grow in New Zealand, so too will our working poor. We're in Invercargill to meet Alana Clark, a cleaner and a delegate for the union Etu, who works seven days a week and still struggles to get by. She's the kind of person who will benefit if the government is serious about lifting wages and helping people in poverty. 
women make up about 61% of people in minimum wage jobs, and it also tends to be women who have low-paying, often multiple part-time jobs. Do you feel valued as a cleaner? No, not at all. Why? We're expected to work long and hard hours um, for very little in return. I also feel we're punished by having to pay secondary tax if we work for more than one employer. So you have multiple jobs? I work for five employers. So one of them is on the normal tax, but all the rest are on secondary tax. And you know, by the time you take your tax on everything out of your wages, you're left with very little to come and go on. Like everything keeps going up and because we're on minimum wage, it's budgeting and making ends meet. It makes it really, really hard. We've got a government that has publicly said it wants to better value professions like yours. What would you like to see from this government? I would like to see um, minimum wage become a living wage to make it easier for not only myself but for all that are on minimum wage to be able to have a lifestyle that gives them a wee bit of flexibility. But I think they need to be working with what they call the living poor, the working poor. Mm. They're out there, they're working for nothing. People like you. Yeah. In April this year, the government increased the minimum wage to $16.50 an hour, still well short of the hourly wage proposed by Living Wage Aotearoa New Zealand of $20.20. In the long term, the government says it will take the rate to $20 by 2021. I think Jacinda is doing a great job. She's come a long way, she's got a long way to go. I think she has got a lot of people support and I think we have to give her the opportunity to be able to do what she said she's going to do. Invercargill's a long way from Wellington and the Beehive. Yes. Do you feel that or do you feel like this is a government that can help me? I feel like this is a government that wants to help me and I do believe they will try and help, but they've also got a lot of previous governments' mess to clean up. <laughs> <laughs>